Uh, okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Jong Dae Kim and I'm going to introduce our network design project called COVID Arcade Promenade. The goal of the project is to provide safe area for social activity by utilizing that space to the COVID-19 era. So uh, in this project, we suggest a new type of third place as you know, the or original third place was on the commuting path, just like this. Especially in Korea, the public transportation is very developed. So this kind of place is easily crowded by the commuter. Since there is a potential risk of infection, this kind of place needs to be avoided. And, uh, and recently, the portion of the telecommuter is increasing. Therefore, the third place should be due to, uh, near to our house and should be spread it all around. Uh, so our final objective is to attract people to select this nearby area, not a far and popular one like this. Then we can minimize the risk of infection while providing the services people need. So our project suggests using pocket park like shaped like this or the schoolyard as a third place. Recently, these kind of places are not properly operated due to the infection control. If we reactivate this area, we can easily provide a new third place to citizens. I think that using school and the pocket park is a very appropriate way because School is one of the most important elements for city zoning, and also the pocket parts are evenly placed in the urban area. So we can say that this kind of approach can be create the model design, which can be generously applied to any other city or country. Uh, so the challenging point of our project is selecting the proper target area. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, but fortun fortunately, we can solve this problem by using various function of NNA tools. Thanks to the tools, we were able to visualize many features in network. The one of those functions I'm going to show is the betweenness analysis. Simply speaking, be betweenness value means how many people visited certain point on the network. Uh, in these figures, red means the busy road and uh, blue means is the quiet. So if we gather all the values on the network, we can actually read the flow pattern of the pedestrians in this town. Uh, these three diagrams show the flow of the pedestrian from three types of origin to the Hangang River Park area. Uh, the, uh, this, this data is from home, and this for retail, and this for entertainment. If we overlap these three data, we can see the general feature of the network. Uh, here, especially here, we can see that the entrance of the park is very busy. And through this, we can easily set the position of our project site, which is away from this road uh, because of our objective is to spread these overcrowding people to quiet areas. So in this time, we set the destination for eight candidate sites for our project area, which is marked with a green hatching. And then we did the same analysis, just like the previous page. And so we can see more evenly distributed pattern than before, which means our location is proper to our objective. And then we evaluated our target area in terms of residential location. Uh, for this, we used the reach 
and gravity analysis. Uh, first, the reach analysis shows the allocated area for each target based on the pedestrian's walking ability. Uh, if we assume that people can walk uh, from zero to 150 meters, only, only these range of pedestrian gonna make it to visit our target. So, uh, but if we input the general walking value, which is uh, zero to 500 meter, range will be expanded like this so that much region can be covered by our target. Uh, and also there is another factor called beta value, which is used to gravity analysis. Uh, this, reflect, uh, this reflects the unique characteristic of environment. For example, uh, what country is, uh, or what city is, or how is the weather like. If the beta value is low like this, it means the walking environment is very harsh. Uh, but in our case, we set the general beta value for Seoul, which is 0 0.004. And by this, we could meet the fine result, result like this. And those were whole process of using NNA tools. Um, and then we also made on-site survey to prove whether the analysis tool feels fit to real life. Uh, we counted the actual pedestrian number at fit, uh, 45 different locations in Mangwandong, Seoul, and compared it with our calculated data. The correlation between on-site and NNA tool was close to 70%, which means NNA tool is quite accurate for this area. Uh, and the area which showed the outlier data was excluded our project candidate and remained this fourth area for our further design. And so by adding our four target area as the additional destination, we could see effects of our project. Awesome. Increased portion of green dot on the map shows that we successfully balanced our network. Now we're gonna design inside network of our target area. First, we check the adjacent road of each area. In this chart, e each column shows the between this value weighted by population data of certain age. For example, this is for teenage and 20s and 30s and so on. And the last column is for total ages. Based on the last column, we can set the direction of network and the position of entrance and exit. Uh, if we properly select, select them, the unbalance of surrounding will be eased, right? Uh, uh, by the way, we can see the highlighted uh, value that show the difference between several ages. I think it will be also interesting to reflect this age-specific demand, but uh, we could not cover it in our project this time. So back to our project, we created catalog for target areas. We classified our target area into three types, the triangle, the square, and rectangular. And then we specified the cases based on the, based on the number of adjacent rows, which can be used as entrance or exit or both. And then, we even subdivided the cases by area dimension of 10 to 3,000 uh, to 3,000 square meters. Uh, through this, we could make the various type of conceptual design on network. And then we made detailed examples for concept design. There, uh, these are the triangle area and these are for rectangular areas. And after that, 
we actually injected our simplified design into the local network. Uh, there was a slight change in the betweenness value, but not so dramatic. So we concluded that we should make more specific and complex networks. So we de developed the catalog more specifically. Uh, first, we set the rule of network line. By the six bit rule, we set the width of main line to two meters in case of one way traffic. Uh, for the two way traffic, we double the width of one way. And, and there is a sub line. Sub line means uh, it, it is diverging from main line. And the sub first line means it goes back to the diverged line. And the second mean it is case of dead end. So uh, in this case, only two way traffic is logically proper because we have to go back to through the way we came from. And also we create the real size of object, including various services such as the gallery, the cafe, food truck, or library. And after that, we made combination of objects which called module. We created three types of shape similar to our target area. And we also made some variation of components like this. And now we applied our catalog to our four target areas. This is the layout of a components for Jandari Children's Park. The shape of the area is triangle and the main concept of the main road is zigzag line. And this is between this analysis changed by network insertion. And this is for Mangwon Elementary School. We also use zigzag concept to rectangular area this time. And this is the network analysis. This is for Dongyo Elementary School. Uh, sorry, I have a problem in my camera. But anyway, I will go on. This is for Dongyo Elementary School. In this case, we use a complicated loop for network concept. And, and it's analysis. And this is for Mangwon Grand Park. The area dimension here is much bigger than other areas. And we applied various patterns. And after all design, we inserted our four network geometry to entire city map. After that, we analyzed between this value. We can see that the adjacent roads around the target area are balanced well, uh, balanced well through the proper design of inner network, entrance and exit. And finally, this is ISO and elevation design image of Mangwon Elementary School. This shows the scenery, this shows the scenery that pedestrian can experience through our main line of this area. And also we can show that our inner network design fits to the six bit rule with red circles under the each ped pedestrian. This is the last of our presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, maybe maybe I can start. I as I as I said last time, I really like your approach uh, by trying to uh, utilize the network analysis and uh, 
developed it as your design tool and occupying a uh, empty space and giving a proposal. Uh, and I think you managed to make a very convincing diagrams. Uh, this, this page looks really great. Um, as I understand, you are designing a, uh, a school uh, public space, is it? Um, yeah, is there, is there a, or maybe I didn't get that point of this, uh, can, can you actually go back to your diagram? Okay, anyways, I think uh, the other day what I didn't really get it is that I thought you are actually uh, also designing uh, where the built elements will be. So the actual school will be also integrated within this area. But now it seems like it's more like a, a outdoor park kind of landscape design. Is that, is that true? And like all this gray area is just empty. Is it, is it correct? Oh. Well, when I was looking at your uh, diagrammatic plan last time, because it was not as actual as this proposal, uh, you didn't have the 3D model by then. So I thought you are also defining where should be the built volumes, uh, and that is the school volumes. That's what I understood, but probably I misunderstood that. Um, what 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 I what I really like about this is that you are creating your network but yeah this is a bit distracting can you go back to your page i think he has some kind of technical issue yeah sorry uh, can, can i share it oh. yeah oh. sure okay so but 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 what i'm saying is uh uh I have similar issue with the first team. Uh, when you are generating a network, I think, or, or the circulatory area, the other area that is not circulatory is something built. Uh, or even if it's a garden, it's a built uh, area. So I think, um, I, I think I, I'm a little bit confused because you are just, you are designing your uh, road uh, and you are taking that road as a built area and then you are designing uh, you are extruding the road literally and building like bridge or like uh, things around it. But I think I'm really curious how do you deal with the void area that is not circulatory area because. I think naturally in the city, uh, non-built area naturally becomes a circulatory area. You know? So I think that relationship is really important. Um, and it's totally fine that you start by generating the network and then occupying the rest of the spaces. But I think you might want to be more uh, intuitively think about the relationship between what's built and what's circulation. And, uh, and yeah, by doing that, you might want to uh, develop certain uh, kind of more generally understandable relationship, like in terms of the, uh, the built, built physical environment. For example, if you cut a section of a road, uh, maybe you, you had that a lot of sections in unit two, which was a uh, second team, which was really good. Um, and that really defines on the relationship between the facade and the street and the garden and the street and so on and so forth. But I feel like you, you are taking certain methodology, which is really interesting. And then, and then you are just building that uh, area without really considering the rest of the area that is not occupied by your circulatory system. 
And I want to know what is your view on that? Oh. Actually, I, I'm not sure that I totally understand the feedback. Um, as I know, uh, you are saying about the relationship between void space and the build, building environment, right? Yeah. Uh, at first, at first we uh, focused on the void space in our city because we can feel the some programs or other installation for some event. I have run the void is the possibility of the possibility of the, is the space of the possibility in the city. So that is the strength of the city. So at first we want to make some temporary installation so we can put the put the item on the void space and then uh, and then uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, in conclusion we want to design the temporary module, but we finally made a uh, not temporarily. So I we think the void is important in the city, but that's the that is the our limitation of this project. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe I just uh, yeah. explanation. Yeah, actually, the Sumi comment will be very helpful for his uh, next step because uh, in this project, students began just began to think about the network first and then how they can fill with the void spaces next. Because while we are just in generally when we design the city or architecture buildings, we always think about the, how we can uh, make occupy the space first, right? Which is where could be the room and where could be the like, I don't know, like maybe the shop or even in a like urban structure, like where we located the retails and where we located the offices, that kind of idea we just set up first and then maybe we think about the circulations and the network issue, maybe the next. Of course, we are always doing the, the kind of like uh, the consider both at the same time, but if we say about which the, the older things, then maybe we also, we always think about the space first, how we can make occupy the, the empty space. But in this uh, project, like students just first think about the network first, you know, before just to fill with the empty space with the programs or densities, students just to first think about the network or circulation in a, within a space and then uh, student, the next step, uh, students uh, think about the, how they can uh, give, how, what kind of shapes could be uh, in a like void, let's say void spaces. So, because this is network analysis kind of uh, studies program, so, uh, the the design approach uh, could be the the different way than kind of uh, like let's say normal like traditional way of design uh, progress. So uh, because we use uh, empty space as uh, just the weight value, you know, we doesn't really consider or like uh, think about the the shape of the buildings or shape of the structure yet. But students more focus on the how they build the new network in an empty plot, which could be very useful during the weekend, you know, like uh, afternoon peak hours. So they just began to think about the temporary installations and how they can build the how they can uh, useful network for the these temporary installations in an empty plot. So, yeah, I think the Zoomin's comment will be very helpful for next step. Like students also think about the, what kind of shape could it be in an empty plot and how people can also use the the network in a, the the empty plot as well. Like students here pro 
kind of showing more kind of main circulatory issues uh, in uh, this step, but the next step could be that students can also design or think about uh, what kind of more kind of uh, narrow down kind of network condition for a uh, uh, empty plus as well in a site. I have I have a one wondering. I mean, you know, once you start to occupy space, but uh, space means three dimensional stuff, not just two D. But I mean, I don't know. Network is kind of relation is quite you know like a great strong ground to decide certain you know decision for the where, where is the locate room or something like that. But I'm I'm just like. That knowledge is directly into the, I mean, translate into the final design. I feel like that. I don't know because I, I, I thought like uh, these guys try to make really nice urban void, or maybe they put on some, you know, like a, uh, you know, very critical uh, urban, I don't know, the bench or kind of, you know, I call it like urban toy or something like that. So it's make in niche the area using that things, but. Uh, but I feel that like, feels like a, you know, like I don't know. We get two weeks work, and, and then he's a bit ambitious, and then he's he's I think he's brave guy. So he tried to push his idea into the you know, design. That's why it happened. So I mean, so it's, it's it's really good start. But if you deal with the void, I think maybe think about the three dimensional approach as well. I mean, not just extrude or or or, or divide the land. Uh, you know what I mean? So. I mean, triangular shape, as I, I showed us uh, first page, second page diagram, is that is quite interesting because those are already have kind of, you know, like a three dimensional approach already there. So I'm a bit interesting, but suddenly final one is a really bit like, uh, you know, yeah, that one is, it, 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 I mean, these guys think about how to deal with the actual, you know, space, but final one is really bit like, Suddenly, you know, I don't know, but so two dimensional one. So yeah, that one. So it just divide the land and locate, you know, some stuff over there. So I don't know. So I'm really expect like a more dynamic things. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, uh, I guess uh, the two answer your question. The first of all, uh, I think it depends on how people interpolate the legal the out of network first. And then they can make some their own decision, like a design strategy to maximize or minimize the result. And I guess in this team, they um, analyze just like other teams. And then they find some particular spot that they wanted to take advantage of it. So uh, basically, they, um, as, as Zhang had mentioned, um, it's like a very temporal, like a versatile installation in a, every, uh, like a, during the weekend or peak time things. So, and also we can expand the graph, um, I mean, let's say network analysis uh, to three dimensional, um, you know, things. It's not just confined in the 2D area. So actually the students uh, already did some several experimentation along the Z axis with the um, network analysis, but the lack of limited time, they couldn't uh, cover that one. So uh, actually, um, the, if I remember correctly, the, from the last meeting, they try to uh, focus on one particular like exercise to convey their idea. So I think that that one is the the the, the installation where they um, build something on the the playground in an elementary school. So yeah, I think um, your question is the very good things to um, you know reinforce your sort of strategy to to you know develop um, your design as an access steps. Yeah. Actually, at first we want to make, we want to analyze three-dimensional NNA tool. So we want to make a multi-floor building and then we want to calculate the circulation of each store, uh, each floor, uh, but Actually, it is also the limitation of our team, but the time wasn't enough for us. It is not, it can, it cannot be an excuse, but at least 
we tried our best at yes. I guess the uh, the most important um, um, point in your research is that they try to um, separate different um, let's say types of paths like a round trip available paths or one way trip, and then they're trying to separate them and trying to reconcile how they you know. Um, you know, regulate the path like one way or two way based on the six bit rule. So I think uh, um, if you guys like emphasize this kind of strategy on the, the, the slide at last, I think that it would be great to you know uh, you know allow to allow us to understand uh, you guys like target or um, the first most important you know issues that you are not dealing with in this um, research, I guess. Yeah, you, you you guys already very actively use the NNA tool as a, your kind of design decision making, you know, like you already done very well about how you define the entrance and how you define the destinations. Actually, those kind of exercises are were very kind of valuable for your design or you for your design progress. So we are uh, I understand you guys just begin to think about the just the kind of pavement or more landscaping kind of design approaches first, and we we actually understand you guys al already tried like three dimensional kind of network circulation for the uh, uh, kind of for the em empty plot or abandoned plot in a city uh, the area so. Uh, that could be the next step and how you accumulate or how to integrate with your actual design proposal and this um, like NNA tools kind of analysis results. Uh, like, so you guys are kind of like in between now, but I can see lots of potential, you know? Uh, so yeah, I think, yeah, that could be the goal. Um. And for me, I really appreciate what you've done because you have lots of works and then you want to achieve the design quality as well at the same time. But on the other hand, I think in this stage, in terms of networking, I think if you deeply uh, have an idea more about different types of networking solution or networking kind of conceptual proposal, rather than just proposing some a single design idea, it could be different way to finalize project, I think. So in a way, it could be different direction, but I think in one week's workshop, two weeks workshops, we can think about it, I think. So yeah, I, because from those kind of full set of analysis, I'd love to see more about what kind of conceptual or what kind of initial model, different types of proposed model for the networking system in the city. For, for instance, we can get more different size of paths or different size of blocks or different size of, I, I don't know, maybe nodes, et cetera, we can maybe produce. So I think, so yeah, so in a way, I think we, we need to think about it a little bit more in my, in my opinion. Right, uh, I think we can still talk a lot more about this project, but I think as we are also uh, coming towards the end, uh, I want to use the rest of the time to have a bit of uh, a general kind of uh, feedback time, maybe, yeah, instead of talking about one specific particular project. Uh, and I want to uh, pose a question to everybody here, in including tutors and the students uh, to to uh, to ask you what do you extra extrapolate from this workshop and how this will affect your uh, work or your next project or next teaching or next study so what do you what do you extrapolate from these two weeks um, can be by anybody. Uh, I encourage also students to talk. I think I can stop. <laughs> Great, thank you. 